Welcome back guys. Today we're gonna play a game and I call it, What's Wrong With My Frame? And we're gonna demonstrate some common problems that I see with fabrication. Before we get started, let's talk about the perfect frame. The ideal box should be constructed from four individual pieces cut to the perfect length. And each piece is cut with the perfect miter cut angle. This allowing you to arrange each component into a perfect 90 degree corner. Then allowing you to have a zero gap weld joint. Then you can wave your magic welding wand over each corner, welding that perfect joint without zero distortion. And your frame comes out perfectly flat every time. But in reality, this is fantasy land. What really happens is, you start off with the most rustiest, crustiest metal you can find. You didn't do a very good job and you cut your material wrong. It's probably too long or too short. Your miter cuts were cut at the wrong angle or your saw cut them improperly. Also, your material could be bowed or warped. And how do you keep your material from warping when you go to weld it? Then how do you keep all the pieces flat and in the same plane? So the first corner of this box, we have a lot of things to consider, such as where's the roll of each tube? Are we gonna use our table or are we gonna use a different reference surface? Another thing to consider, are the miters actually cut where they need to be? And we use that with a square. And you can tell that these miters that I have cut are not perfect. There's a gap there. So that's consideration number two. The next thing to worry about is how is the joints going to line up with each other. Where along this are they gonna be positioned? This tube and this tube are square to each other, but by shifting it down the line, we can see that it adjusts its length. Another thing to consider is this. This is the flatness. Is this table flat? And we really can't make that decision until this joint is here, and this joint is here, and this joint is here. Because what we really need to do is pull an overall measurement over everything. So how do we work on this one connection, but we need the other three to do their job also? So that's the problem. I need to be working on four joints at once. I have to pull diagonal, make sure everything's square, and I have to keep all the roll out of the tubes, and I need to get them positioned and held down in place when I go to do my welding. So those are a lot of things to worry about just for a simple box or a frame. How do you know that any of these things are wrong? I have a solution for you. It's gonna be the fastest. It's not the cheapest, but it is the best. So let me show you. I'm gonna be using a tool that's gonna to allow me to build my frame before I cut any material. And this tool is called a fixture table. The fixture table has a precision milled surface and holes drilled on a perfect grid pattern. The table uses something called fixtures and they drop in the holes. The purpose of the fixtures is to make the shape that you want to build first. And then you can place the material on the table and they will come out exactly where you want them to be. Think of building on a fixture table like driving a car on modern roads. There are lines and curbs that guide us through and around the land. Welding without a fixture table compares to navigating the open wilderness in a wagon. I already have my fixture set up and have two Welding 101 fixture table videos on the Fireball Tool second channel that I recommend you guys go watch so that you're all caught up to speed on how the fixtures work and why I've set the fixtures up in this way. My frame that I'm gonna build is gonna have one side measuring 20 and a quarter inches wide and the other being exactly 20 inches long. To keep it simple and short, every dimension between the blocks are set up the way I want. I have 20 inches set up between this one and this one, and I have 20 and a quarter set up between here and here. So let's look at my pieces. I have miter cuts, and if you look, this piece has been mitered. It is exactly 20 and a quarter. Look at this one. This one is also 20 and a quarter. If you were to give the Sawyer this job, this is what would come out. He'd give you the exact right number. Let's take a look at these ones. These ones are supposed to be 20 inches long. I mean, I'm just a sliver long. And overall length for this one, I can already tell that I'm oversized by a 32nd of an inch. So that's gonna be a problem, isn't it? Let's see what happens when I start fitting these pieces inside of this square. So I'm gonna take my 20 inch dimension and I'm gonna put it over here and I'm gonna get my 20 and a quarter and put it over here. And I can marry these into the corner. Everything's turning out great. No problems yet. I'm gonna take my other 20 and a quarter. I'm gonna put it over here. So everything's just kind of moving around. I'm already starting to see a problem. I see this gap right here. How is this happening? All my pieces are the exact same length that they should be to make this box. What is going on? Of course, this piece doesn't fit because this piece is too long. 
what happened? Does it look like my miters are cut weird? That's really acceptable. Those angles don't look like they're crooked. What's happening? Well, we have the thickness of the material. In order for this to come to a zero, zero, something's got to change. As you can see, these tubes were cut to length first, and then I came back and mitered it. And you see how this edge is flat? What's happening is this 45 is proud of the actual measurement we need. What we need is this 45 to intersect the thickness of the material. So I want you guys to be aware when fabricating of this condition right here. The miter shouldn't look like this where it comes to a flat surface, but instead looks like this where the material wall is a perfect 45 degree. But most people would just continue to weld this together and then when they're all done, they pull their measurement on the outside and go, dang it or they'd move this back to accommodate the material. But this is the beauty of fixture tables. It's going to limit me. And now I have to, as a fabricator, make some adjustments. Another common problem I see is bad saw cuts, where the saw blade has cut the material but has wandered, changing the dimension. Oftentimes, this goes unnoticed and slowly gets worse over time. This is generally caused by a dull blade or the blade is missing teeth, too much blade pressure, or the saw guides not adjusted properly and most often the guides are too far apart, allowing the blade to wander. I've also seen the tension in the saw blade set too loose and giving the same wandering results. I've also used saws that don't cut the desired angle that I wanted. Here's a few examples. When the blade drifts, it causes one side of the tube to be longer or shorter. When these miter joints meet, it can cause the joint to spread out or get shorter than desired. Depending on what your blade is doing, this can cause all sorts of different unwanted corner conditions. Visualizing if your saw is cutting weird can be really hard to determine sometimes. It only takes a little bit for your corner to be off. It also causes large gaps to be filled in with weld, increasing the chances of warping the material. It's frustrating to have your frame grow or shrink in size because your saw is cutting weird. If the two intersecting miters are cut to an acute angle, the outside of the tubes will touch first. And in this miter cut condition, it's okay because it still allows me to get the overall dimension that I'm looking for. But at the downside, I'll have to fill a big gap in with weld. The other condition is that the miter cuts are obtuse. And this is bad because the inside of the tubes touch first, therefore creating an interference that no matter what I do, makes the box grow in size. And unfortunately, I'll still have a big gap to fill. So I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to shorten them up and I'll show you how it all fits together and slice something down. So I'm going to take an eighth of an inch off this, see where we end up. And look at that, Shoo! drops in. Oh, that's so much better. Just like that, beautiful. And then I can just arrange them and get my corners fitting how I want. And then I can clamp it into place. And now when I pull my overall measurement, I mean, it is right on the money. Look at the accuracy that you have with a table like this. This is incredible. I mean, 16th of an inch, that's a really wide tolerance. I mean, we can nail 30 seconds pretty easily. I know a table like this is a luxury. But as a professional, I like knowing that I don't have to worry about the little things. I like knowing that my machines, my material, and myself don't have to be perfect, but my work is. So thank you guys for watching. I have many more videos on how to fixture and fabricating. Please feel free to watch those, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.